you were talking about is uh, at times when uh, the presence of the Lord is there so much that you don't feel like you need to preach. And uh, that other times, I guess, you would, after a while, maybe soak in his presence and you would go on with the rest of the service to preach. Can you kind of describe the, what it is that the Spirit's saying to you to, to know the difference? Because uh, I just, from my personal experience, uh, sometimes it's like the worship leader, you, you, the presence is there, you want to just stay there as long as you can, and yet there may be expectations to go on with the service, and you know, maybe it shouldn't do that. You know, but the other thing that I don't always know is, um, is other people sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Are they sensitive to Him, you know, His presence as I am, or am I the only one in the room that's like getting whacked here? So. <laughs> you know, the question is a really good question. And I, I honestly would like to take about a whole session to talk about it, and, and I'll tell you the reason. <clears throat> you know, that decision, for example, the decision to just continue to worship is not the worship leader's decision. It's whoever's in charge of the meeting. In my case, when I'm here, I'm in charge, unless I, I, I may choose someone else to be in charge of the meeting, but it's my call. <clears throat> So it's my, it's my decision. What your job is to do is continue in that mode of worship and leading the people farther and farther into his presence until whoever's in charge says, this is where it is. Um, if that's not clear, then you need to work that out with the pastor that's in charge. If you're in charge of the meeting, then how do you know to continue? You have to make sure that you're leading. Because there's a lot of worship leaders that sing and play instruments, but people don't follow them. And because they don't follow, they're not actually leading. A leader means people follow. That's the implication. <laughs> and a good worship leader, by the way, will always start where the people are, not where they are, after an hour of prayer and preparation. And the most common, one of the most common mistakes is a worship leader will get before God's people after they've been ready for an hour and everybody else been frantically getting the kids dressed to come to the meeting. And they're not nearly as ready as the worship team is because they've been up there, they've prayed, they've sought God, they've practiced, they've done all their stuff. And the worship leader needs to start with the people. And so when you do that, and then you have people following, and you only know that a worship leader has to kind of sacrifice the gift. And you have to have an eye on the Lord and an eye on people. You have to make sure they're following. And you, know, you won't always have everybody follow you. But as long as you have the majority of people moving with you in the expression of the Lord and in in those moments in between songs where they will people people can sing energetically, but it's what do they do in between the songs when they are left to themselves? Well they minister then to their they easily distracted then. That's when that's how you decide. As you look around, are people following? Are they are they pushing in because of where this worship leader is taking us? I'll be really honest with you. Not all of our worship leaders know what to do in that moment. And so, if I have a worship team up here that's not quite as experienced in what I call the glory, then I will cut it short because uh, the, the chances are way too high that that we won't end well. And I, I've, had a, I've had new worship leaders up here that I'll, I'll experiment with. They don't know I'm experimenting with. I'll, I'll experiment with them. And I'll just, I'll just watch as the glory comes. What do they do? Because a lot of people get busier. But the person who's aware of the presence doesn't get busy. He just knows that his or her role is much more, it's much more critical. But it's not, it's not uh, busy. It's like, I don't need to say another word, but if he has me speak, it'd be very important. It's that kind of a deal. And when you learn to lead in that atmosphere of gold, that's what you have to do. You have to learn to respond to that, that atmosphere of presence. And I'll look, and I'll look at our new worship leaders, and I'll look at our old ones, and I'll see who knows how to respond to that, to that glory. And uh, it's only through trial and error. It's only through, you give people room to succeed, which means you give them room to make mistakes. And, and, uh, and you just see what they do with that presence. If they, if they quickly shift from inner court ministry of deep, tender romance and they shift to an evangelism song, then they probably didn't get it. They probably missed it. Uh, and what happens is people will do that. They will actually take us in and out, in and out, in and out of the presence throughout a worship time. 
because they'll, you know, put their songs in an order according to the speed of the song <laughs> instead of the, the nature of the song, what experience it's supposed to take us into. And so they'll have a fast song at the beginning that actually may be intense, deep uh, praise, and they'll take us into a slow song that may have nothing at all to do with worship and may have more to do with, uh, you know, repentance and... You know, it's just sometimes we craft things without thinking. We we do it according to a feel of a song instead of the word God's taking us. Does that make any sense at all? So there's a lot of stuff involved there that I would love to get into because I've, I've got a whole bunch of years of, uh, of experience both good and bad. And so like this. Maybe we'll have just a question and answer time just on that one these days. So see if we can arrange that. Good.